Good morning, this is Faith and her crafty ideas, soon to be stitching at the barn. So we'll talk about that a little bit more later, but thank you for joining me today. And if you're new, I hope that you'll enjoy my uh, what you see today and you'll hit the like button and the subscribe button and you'll tell your friends about it. And if you're returning, I uh, appreciate it so much that you are uh, continue to watch and uh I hope you'll enjoy what you see today also. And I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving with family and friends and uh, had some good food to eat. And uh, we had a good Thanksgiving. My son came in from Colorado and was here with us. Um, my oldest son was not here. He had went to Alaska to visit his cousin. So I just had one of my children here with me, but that was okay. We still had a good time and we enjoyed him being here. And um, uh, do you have all your Christmas decorations up? That's what I worked on over Thanksgiving. I worked on getting all my decorations up and we've got our tree up and everything's done. And um, I've got all my nativity scenes up. If you um, look on my Facebook, which is just uh, under my name, Faith Slagle, you can see all of my nativity scenes. And I've been going through and showing one or two of my nativity scenes each day, and I'm trying to count them to see how many I actually have. Uh, between my big ones and my little ones, I like the little tiny ones. Those are some of my favorite ones. I know I have over 60. So right now I've shown 22. Who, I think it was 22 last night. I'm up to 22. So uh, I invite you to go on my Facebook, just under Faith Slagle, and you can look at some of those um, nativity sets and see what I've got there. But anyways, I did something yesterday. I went um, on my YouTube and went into my subscribe list to see how many different floss tubes I watch. I just wanted to know, I was really curious, and I made a list of them. Because I thought, well, that'd be kind of interesting, just to see how many I do watch. And would you know that I have 62 of them? Now, I may have missed one, so I want to keep my eyes open. I typed them up and I put them on a paper, and I tried to get their names of everybody. So I'm going to have this paper beside me when I watch. So if I miss somebody's name, I can add that in there. Because I really would like to have their, the name of who's doing it. And some of them, I didn't have their name right off the bat. And um, But anyways, there are 62 different floss tubes that I watch. And I really can't say there's any of them or one of them that it's like, nah, I'm not going to watch that one. You know. So... That is what. So I have been starting the last two times sharing two floss tubes that I like to watch. So today, two of the ones on my list that I really enjoy watching are Sweetwater Stitcher, who is Jessica Provost. She's from Florida, and I really enjoy her. If you want somebody to uh, look at what they're doing and kind of make you like, oh, I'd like to do that one. Jessica's a good one, and uh, she kind of does a lot of things that I do, and so, and she's got three small children, uh, or young children, I should say, and she's went back to uh, school this year to help at the school. I'm not sure if she's a teacher or just an aide or what she does, but she's went back to start doing that, so she's a busy woman, and Stitching Mama, Sarah, Sarah the Stitching Mama, I really enjoy watching her. She's the one that uh, created like that there, which is the weather temp temperature weather, and the one I'm doing this year, which is the tree. She's the one that does a lot of them. And I really enjoy her. Now, she has got a lot of whips. And she stitches in hand, and she's the one that kind of got me encouraged to start practicing on stitching in hand, and I really enjoy stitching in hand now. I'm probably not as good as she is, but I really enjoy stitching in hand. And she was the one that really kind of got me started on that. But anyways, those are the two that I'm going to mention this week. And I really enjoy watching both of them. So um, 
I hope that when you watch, you'll decide to get creative in some way. If it's not cross-stitching, it'll be some other way. But anyways, let's get started. The last time I videoed was November the 7th, so that was exactly one month ago. So since uh, we went on our little trip, and uh, that's what I had told you about the last time, and everything, we've been just here at home trying to catch up on a lot of things, and we decorated, had Thanksgiving, and, you know, doing that. And um, December the 1st through the 3rd, I joined in on the Jingle Ball. That was so much fun. That was a first for me. And it's a little like having an online stitching retreat in your own home. You can just be in your pajamas, sweatpants, and a t-shirt, and just be relaxed. Now, the first evening, I had a little trouble, and I was kind of frustrated the first evening. The um, camera on my laptop, I was trying to get into, I'll go through each one of these and explain it. I was trying to get into the speed dating, and um, I'll go through that and explain that in a minute. And I had no camera. I thought, what in the world is wrong? And I was trying to fix it and trying to figure out why. So I gave up on that. I used my husband's uh, computer the first night and come to find out my camera is not working. So it was nothing I was doing wrong. So we had to fix that problem the first night. Then on Saturday, um, he needed his computer, so I couldn't use his computer. So I tried using my iPad and that just didn't work. So from then on, I had to use my phone, and it worked okay, but it wasn't the best ideal situation. But anyways, um, I really had fun. It was really neat. When you don't have people that you can stitch with, or the closest people that I can stitch with are like an hour or an hour and a half away. So it just doesn't make it convenient that I can just sit down and go to somebody's house or you know, go two or th uh, 10 or 15 miles and have a sit down and stitch time. But anyways, uh, this is put on by Stephanie Webb, and I know she's got a group with her from Lindy Stitches, and she's the one that does it, and I applaud them. They did an awesome job. And they have different rooms set up that you can go to and uh, check it out, and one of the rooms is called the ballroom, and if you go there, it's just like a continuous uh, roll of different things. Like the different designers came on there, and some of them would talk about their new designs and what they had. Uh, some uh, read a book I saw. I didn't watch them all, get all of them watched. Uh, one or two of them I know did a recipe and showed how they made that. And there's just different things. And you could just go to that and sit and watch that while you were stitching. That was just really cool. And then they had some um, free, they had some classes, different classes you could go to. Now I did not, this was my first time, so I did not pay to go to any of the classes. And the designers would teach you how to do a certain thing. Well, there were, and some of them, they did free classes. So I went to one of the free classes, and it was on perforated paper, the ornaments, how to finish them up. Well, since I got one this summer, or when I was at Stitch West, take that back, I thought that would be a good one to go to. So I did that, and that was put done by uh, Jody Rice from Satsuma Street. So I went to that one, and that was very interesting. And for a little while here, I can go back and watch it again. And I need to go back because I missed just the first couple minutes of it. Because there again, I was fighting with my phone or something. I was fighting with it. So anyways, uh, we could do that. But okay, the next one is, it's called the Whip Speed Dating. First time I mentioned that, my husband said, you're going to do what? Uh, but anyways, you go into a room. And it goes for 30 minutes, and they hook you up with another cross-stitcher, and you get to talk to them for five minutes. And you introduce yourself to them. You don't have much time. You get to introduce yourself to them, find out where they're from, maybe what they're working on, what they like to work on. But it is so cool. I just met so many people. I can't even begin. I tried to write them all down, and... Um, 
it was just so interesting. Um, first one I met, and this was what really made me aggravate the first night when I didn't have my camera, from Floss Boss and Cousins, uh, Chrissy. I knew who she was. I said, I know who you are. I said, I know you can't see me. I said, my camera's not working. I said, but, you know, so we talked, and she understood and everything. So I got to talk to her. Lisa Smith from Kindred Stitcher, I got to talk to her. Kim from Contented, she knew who I was. I think she's um, subscribed on my channel, so we talked a little bit. I met somebody from Illinois, Alberta, Canada, uh, and here I even met one from Oklahoma. And her and I talked about what was available closest. She's got quite a ways to drive to be with anybody also. So we talked about that, but you know, it was just, it was just fun to meet people. So I did that two or three times, I think maybe even four, but that was just fun. It was like 30, 30 minute segment. And, and within that 30, 30 minute, blah, 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 30 minute segment, you know, you got to meet five different people or six. So that was just really cool. Then they had a stitching lounge and they had all these different rooms. They had a name for all the rooms. And you could go go into the room and you could just sit back and stitch and talk to people that were in that room. And you could see them and uh, just talk to them. Well, two friends that I had met at Stitch West, Jessica and Jennifer, hi. Um, we decided, you know, that what room we wanted to be in and we would go in those rooms and we could just sit and talk and I got to catch up with them. And other people would come in and join us and we met somebody from New York and just different places. And um, that was so much fun to meet with them. And even um, Kim from the Contenant Needle, I think it was Saturday night or maybe it was Sunday afternoon. She came in our room and she just talked to us and she's so sweet. So we got to talk to her again. Kim, if you're watching, hi. And anyways, so we got to talk to her and it just was so fun. I could just sit back and relax and, and you can just stitch with them and talk to them. So from that, um, Jessica, she's going to try to get a Zoom started for some of us called and that we're going to meet maybe once a month or something for a couple hours that we can just sit and stitch and talk. So I am looking so forward to doing that. That'll be just cool if she can get that all put together because not only... Does she have to pick a time for her? She has to, the ones that she sent it out to, I think she's got like three, if not four different time zones to work with. So you have to put it at some time in the day that everybody, it'll kind of work for everybody. So we'll just have to see. But anyways, then they had a store that you could go into each of the um, online, the designers go into their stores, and you could buy some of their patterns or material, whatever. Well, I didn't go into the stores to buy. I looked at their patterns, and I looked at their material and stuff. I'm not one to, I don't like to, to do material and stuff that I don't know about and stuff. I'm not good at that yet. But um, anyways, but I did get a couple free patterns. Um, I did go in and do that, and... Oh, right here in front of me. Good gravy. I did pick up a couple free patterns. And I thought that was really neat. The Tiny Monterist. Monter, Monterist. She put out this one here. It's called Hot Cocoa. Old Fashioned Hot Cocoa. It's not very big. So it's, you know, one that I think I can do. I may not do it this year. But that one I could do. And uh, Teresa Cogan. I really like her. I love to watch her. And so she did two. One of them was called the Jolly Soul. I think that is so cute. Santa standing up there on that Y. My pattern did not print out real well. I'm going to have to try them again, I think. And then the other one she put out was, it's just called Christmas. Just a simple little one. Nothing big. But they're just simple enough that I think, you know, that I could do those simply. And then this one, you would put it into a tart pan when you got it made. 
That's what it would look like after it was made. And it said, Sprinkle Christmas Kindness. I just liked what it said. There's a pattern for it. But sprinkle Christmas Kindness. So those are the ones that I got. And I thought, I wish, but they were all free. So I, I didn't show them very long. If anybody is that greedy, good girl, heavens to Betsy. But anyways, and my patterns are not good enough. So, anyways, um, that's what I did there. So, what have I been stitching on? Well, let's see what I have been stitching on since I saw you last. I don't know if I showed this the last time or not because I was working on it right during the time that I was, um, that I did my last video. It's called Praying Hands, and this is what it will look like. And I, I was so bad this time about taking pictures. Don't ask me why, but I was bad. Bad, bad, bad. But anyways, just a second, let me reach down here to get it. This is the only one I have on a big stand. But this is where I'm at on this. So I've got, I have worked, I worked on the hands this last time. I've got quite a bit accomplished on it. I'm feeling really good about it and I enjoy working on it. So, that's where I'm at on that one. That was my whip go for November, so I worked on it for six days. So, that's where I'm at on that one. Okay. Let me put this back in my bag so I don't lose it. The next one that I worked on, I'm getting my cottages. I'm getting there. This is my October cottage. That's one I'm doing right now. And no, I don't have a picture of it either. Why? I don't know. Let me move my, let me just let my dangling thread go down. But that's where I'm at on my October one. Hopefully in January, whenever I change them out on my wall, I'll be able to do them for the whole year. April's been hanging out there since April. So, and I can't blame it on my finisher. Just haven't been able to give them to her. That's my cottage. The next one, I do have a picture of, so I will insert that right there. But this is what it will look like right there. It's the one I'm doing. It's going to be Slagle Home. I changed house to home, and I am not going to put the two little ducks. I'm just going to leave that empty. Okay. And I'm just about... All I've got left up here to do is finish this L. And here I've got another dangling thread. We'll just let it dangle. All I have to do is finish that L. And then I'll be ready to do the established uh, and put our date in there that we were married. So hopefully the next time we work on that, I work on it, I'll be able to get quite a bit more done and maybe very close if not finish it up. And the A, the apples, I have to do some green on the apples. I do have to go back and do that. I do have to finish that part up. So hopefully that one won't take me too much longer and I can finish that one up. So, Got that one. And then I have a picture of this one, and I'll put it in right here where I was. 
and I've worked on uh, this one, I think twice since I saw you last. And I'm gonna keep it folded. And here is where I'm, and I need to cut my material now that I know the width of it. I can cut my material now. I've got the family visits, the turkey dressing, and I'm starting on the woolen sweater. I'll show you a picture of it here. I, did, I do have to go back up and put some little things in a couple of those lights. I do have to go back up and do that. But I was kind of waiting till that color of thread came up again and do it when I have it on my needle. Over here, if I can do this without making, this right there, that'll be a sweater. That's what I'm getting, woolen sweater. Let me show you a picture of how it will be. Uh, where's my picture? Here it is. There's my picture of it. So I am right here. Trying to finish each section as I go. So that's where I am on that one. I worked on it last night. All right. And the next one, Virtuous Woman. And I have a picture of that one where I was before. And this is what it'll look like. And I love this one. I just really enjoy it. And I consider each little square an accomplishment when I get, as I do each square. That's what it'll look like. And here is where I'm at. I finished the one in the middle there, the man and the lady, the lady and man. I finished that one. And now I'm over here working on this basket. That's the one I'm really working on. What I do is I work on one, and if I have any thread left over, then I'll go down and finish up my thread in another box. So that's what I like to do. So that's where I'm at on that one. The next one is, oh, and yeah, and that was a November whip go. So I did get quite a bit done on that virtuous woman. Didn't say that. The next one is a new one. That was my November new one to start. And it's called Christmas Tree Faith. How fitting. But this is, it's a small one and it looks like that right there. That's a little manger scene right down there, if you didn't, couldn't tell. And then that says Faith over there. And I only worked on it two days, but I almost got it done. And this one, I need to cut my material for this one also. But there's where I'm at on it so far. Sorry about the wrinkles. So basically all I've got left to do on this one is to put the things hanging on the tree. That's basically all I have left on this one. Whatever goes on the tree branches. And then there's also, and I think I have them, there's like three little buttons. And I think in the original set, I think I got this off of a freebie table. On the original set, if you look at it, there's little tiny buttons. I think I've got three little buttons. If I decide to, I can put those on it. That's what needs to go. So I think the next time I work on this, I can finish that one up too. So that one was my new one. The next one is my Stitchy Stars. And
and it looks like that. Oops. And here is where I'm at on that. The first two boxes, let me fold that up a little bit. The first two boxes are completely done. So I'm on the third one to finish the white and I've done a little bit on the fourth. So that's that one. Okay. And I know that you can do those in fall colors, spring colors, and I went looking for that today, and I could not find it. So I'm going to have to do some more um, research on that. Oh, and I worked on my quilt. And um, hopefully I want to get that done before August of next year so I can take that to the Hydro Fair. And I will put a picture of that in of my quilt right here to show you what it looks like at this stage. I forgot to do that, to bring it in here in my room with me. But I will put a picture of where I'm at and hold that up while I'm yapping. And so I feel pretty good about what I've got done on it. And then the last one, and I need to get me a bell. I can't use my phone to ring a bell because I'm videoing on my phone, so I'm gonna have to buy me a bell to ring so I can be like Pam and Steph. But my last one I worked on was my Spring ABC. Oh, which I took the main picture out. But anyways, I am done. Here it is. There it is. It's complete. And I finished this while I was chatting with my friends. So ding, 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 ding. It's done. So what I want to do with this, if I can find one... I'd like to find a, 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 a shutter, a window shutter, an old one that nobody's using. And I'd like to use this to put it on. And then, so I can put all of them on there and magnetize it and change them in and out. That's what I really want to do. So there we go. So that one is a finish. That one is a finish finish. So, now what am I going to do? Well, my plans are, let me bring my little stack over here. I'll keep working on that stack. I'd have in my December, here's how I do it. I used to fill out my calendar and put in each day what I was going to do. Well, I decided I was going to do a little different. I just made a list over here of all my set and I put numbered them in the order of how I wanted to do them. And so number one was, uh, I had to just do a little bit on my country bloomers. I had to put a, about two or three stitches in there. I marked it off. Number two was my spring ABC finished, marked it off. Number three, Silver Creek, worked on that last two evenings, I marked it off. So tonight, number four is Stitchy Stars. So I will do that. And then at the end, when I get ready to go to Jan January, whatever is not marked off, they will start off being my one, two, three, four. And I'll just keep my list on the side of my calendar. That way, I don't have to move things within the calendar. So, and uh, I can do it that way. So I have them all lined up what I'm going to do. So anyways, since I finished my spring ABCs, into that bag will go my new ABCs. And it is my summer ABCs. And that's what it looks like. And I've just ordered a piece of material 
for it. So that should be quite excited about that to get started on that. And um, I had finished up my, if you remember the last time I told you that I had finished up my tiny town, I showed you a picture of it. And so now when tiny town comes up, I'll be starting my patriotic tiny town. So that's what it looks like. So that one will go into its bag. I will keep a tiny town going at all times. Oops, sorry. So that's the tiny town that I will be working on. And then, if you know, each month I try to start a new one. Well, here's my humdinger. I'm excited about it, but yet it's going to be a big one. And I've had this one for two or three years. It's called the auction. No, 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 no. Auction day. I'm sorry. Auction day. And I'm going to start this one. So that's one, that is the one that's going to be started this month. And it's by Jane Lynn. So all the threads and everything came with it. So everything's in there. It's pretty well sorted and everything. So I'm excited about starting it. It's got it in pages. So I'll just do page one till it's done. Then I'll do page two. So that is my new one to start. And then, good gravy. Those are my new starts. And so I think that's got all that. And then um, for like next year, in January, when I do my whip parade, whatever, and show you all, well, I will try to show you all my finishes that I've done in all of 2023 and all my whips and uh, finishes and everything. I will try to start from January 1 and work my way through and kind of show you everything that I've completed last year. I plan to do that in January. And then at that time, I will show you what my pieces are going to be for next year. I haven't picked out. Some people are doing 24 new starts or some way they're doing 12 whips and 12 new starts, whatever. I'm not doing that because I fear I have 24 by the time the year's done anyways. But I do have, and I like to be organized, I know. These are the ones that I'm working on right now. So that's how I have them laid out. And here was my December, my auction. So if you see, I've got January, February, I've got them all laid out of which one I'm going to start in which month. So I've already got my next year new starts laid out. Now, the only new starts that are not listed there is like if I finish, um, if I finish a nativity, another nativity on my list down here will go in that nativity bag's place. If I finish a cottage another cottage will go. So those will be new starts, kind of, but they're going to that cottage place. Um, Stitchy Stars, I'm hoping I can put another one in its place. Uh, which other one? Um, Tiny Town, another one will go in its. So those are new starts also, because those bags I just replaced, whatever that is. So, you know, there's some new starts that are on down on page two and three. Okay, so this is only page one. And so I will, sh I will show you my new starts that I have planned that I have planned for next year. All right, uh, let's see. My cards, I did, oh, here we go. Last time I didn't show you any of my cards. So I wanted to do that because I like to make cards and I like to send out cards. Right now I'm doing my Christmas cards, but these are a couple of cards that I have made and I thought I'd share them. Here's one that I send to children sometimes. It says, I think of you. 
So that's one I do. And I know that Thanksgiving is fall is past, but I just reached in and pulled some out. This is one of my fall cards that I do. And here's one of my Christmas cards from the past. And it says on there, little baby, sweet and small, small, born to be the king of all. So that was one I did. And the last one, oh no, I have two more, sorry. And this is one that you can send to anybody, adult, a child, whatever. It says, you are precious in his sight. Just a simple one. I like that one. And then my last one is more for a lady. And it's for a birthday card. And I like this one. I do that one. So there we go. That was my cards that I wanted to share with you. Okay, let's see what else. See if I've got everything that I did. Instead of writing out all my things, I tried to do bullets this time. I think I did pretty decent. I don't think I forgot anything. But I thank you for spending some time with me and my projects. I, I hope I inspired it, and I hope you'll share um, my link with other people. And uh, I want you to have a wonderful rest of December. And if you're going to stay around for my reading today, I hope you do. And if not, you have a, a great December. And I hope to be back within a month, definitely. And I would like to try three weeks, but we'll see. Can't promise. We'll just see how things go. But our reading for today is called An Indescribable Gift. God, though I try every day, I find I can't quite put into words what you've done for me since you came into my life. Life is just good. The hard things are just easier. I just feel better. It's inadequate, I know, but the gift of your influence is sometimes beyond my power to explain. Thank you, Lord for your indescribable gift. There is no one like you. So maybe that's why there's no words quite right to explain you. I pray that my joy is attractive enough to outshine my poor description and that those who need you will invite you in and find out for themselves. We just had Thanksgiving, and that's supposed to be when we're thankful for things. So, have you thanked the Lord lately for all of his indescribable gifts for you? Something to think about for today. Well, you have a wonderful rest of December and a blessed Christmas. And like I said, I hope I'll be back soon. We'll see. And uh, stay cool. And keep on stitching. Bye-bye.